activity on the sun's backside begins to rotate into Earth view, and I get up close and personal with the project scientist of Parker Solar Probe. Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week has been reasonably quiet. We've been getting some small pockets of fast wind that really hasn't been all that fast from a remnant coronal hole that's, well, really not much of a coronal hole. It's pretty much just a bunch of ratty mixed fields that have been sending us more like disturbed solar wind. And I know it's been driving your Aurora field reporters crazy. Even at high latitudes, it's been extremely difficult to get some decent shots with sporadic Aurora. The nice thing is that it's actually stabilized the upper atmosphere and made GPS reception a little bit better and it's also helped boost radio propagation for you amateur radio and shortwave radio responders. Now these conditions will continue easily over the next three to five days before things settle down and for you Aurora photographers there is hope on the horizon. We do have a returning coronal hole that's just rotating into Earth view off of the Sun's east limb. This is that same coronal hole we've done a dance with with since August. So hopefully as we get a better look at it, we'll be able to tell whether or not it's going to be a solar storm producer. And also there are some other bright regions on the sun's backside that should be rotating into Earth view here in the next week. And that might actually boost the solar flux up even more and help radio propagation reach another level. Switching to your M-Flare threat meter, you can see the X-ray flux continues to be extremely low and therefore by proxy the solar flux continues to be low. As a matter of fact, the last time we actually had any flare activity at all was back on the 6th. This was from region 2732 that fired off a couple B and C class flares before it died and went around the back side of the sun. Since then we've been sitting really low and it looks like these conditions are going to continue. We're hovering just at the marginal range of radio propagation and until we get uh, the new regions from the sun's backside into earth view these conditions will continue switching to your solar storm conditions you can see the last time we actually hit storm levels was back on the fifth this was due to some fast wind that actually gave us a decent aurora show but it didn't last all that long after that it kind of calmed down to unsettled conditions and continued to roar at high latitudes but not too much at mid latitudes Finally, it quieted down around the 8th, and since then we've been fighting these little pockets of fast solar wind that have bumped us up even sporadically to active conditions for a short while on the 11th, but really have kept us pretty much unsettled conditions, and this is the way it's going to continue easily over the next 3 to 5 days before we get to talk about the new coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone hmm, sometime in about 10 days. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And well, at least the backside of the sun looks a lot more fun than the front side right now. Do you see that dark region kind of on the west side of Stereo's view? That's the coronal hole that is just beginning to rotate back into Earth view, and it looks like it's formed well enough that it could actually give us yet another solar storm. So your aurora photographers, you keep your fingers crossed, because this could be in about 10 days, maybe two weeks at most. Now what is also exciting is we've got two bright regions on the sun's backside, and one of them has been firing little mini flares. So amateur and shortwave radio, well, that may give us a boost to the, to the radio propagation here starting in about a week. So it looks like we've got a lot to look forward to. And speaking of looking forward, while at the AMS meeting just last week, I got to get up close and personal with a project scientist of the Parker Solar Probe. And while he can't show us any of the data quite yet, because the instruments are still kind of in a commissioning phase, and they just want to make sure that all the exciting things that they think they're seeing are really real and ready for public dissemination, which is really cool. But while we all kind of sit on pins and needles, I got to talk to him about what he thinks the impacts of the data and the exciting findings that they're already getting from the spacecraft are going to mean in terms of our future understanding of the solar wind and the sun's corona. And on top of that, I also got his thoughts on whether or not the Parker Solar Probe might be robust enough for an extended mission. Take a look. So we are chatting about the first light of 
Parker Sarov Pro. Yes. Um, I am Noor Rawafi from the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. I am the project scientist of Parker Sarov Pro, the most exciting mission ever. 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 And how many firsts? How many milestones? Records? Rec record in terms of distance, speed, uh, um, uh, reaching the moon orbit, reaching Venus orbit. Uh, there are many other firsts, I forgot them, but there are so many firsts about this mission. I, I believe Parker Solar Probe is going to change the picture of the solar wind that uh, we know so far from other missions. We are, what we are seeing now is, is really exciting. It's brand new. We never, we've never seen, seen it before. So this is, this is exciting. Times. And to hear this man talk is unbelievable. I was almost in tears when he was talking about some of the new light and the fact that everything is working so beautifully. It's getting A's all the way across the board in terms of performance. And we're already talking p potentially an extended mission because we are saving a lot of propellant. propellant. So this is, if the spacecraft is, is healthy at the end of the seven years, we are looking for much many more years for, for extended mission. The only thing we've got to do is try to figure out how to get beacon data so we can do space weather forecasting. I know that isn't possible with Parker Solar Probe. I wish we could, but this is going to be, hopefully set the stage for maybe an L5 mission, set hopefully. the stage for maybe polar even a mission. polar mission. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if, basically, if, if uh, we can do Solar Probe, uh, which is really very challenging technologically, we can do any other mission. Do you think we could get Parker Solar Probe and maybe the, the world records, Guinness Book of World Records? Is I think it, it is. Oh, that's fantastic. It is. We should have that. You yeah. should have it. We have a I believe of it is. everything yes. in it. Yeah. Okay. we got to yeah. look that up. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are being hit by those small pockets of fast solar wind that really aren't all that fast but do a lot to kind of disturb things for short periods. So it's causing a forecasting to give us kind of a bit of a large possibility and range. So at high latitudes, NOAA's expecting unsettled conditions, but we even have about a 20% chance of a major storm. Most likely we're not going to be seeing anything like that, at least nothing sustained, we could probably get uh, about 20% chance of minor storms as well, and this could last easily throughout the week at high latitudes. Now, mid-latitudes, we're really only expecting unsettled conditions with only about a 10% chance of active conditions, and this is because these little sporadic things just don't last long enough to affect the mid-latitudes. The aurora doesn't really have time to drop down to mid-latitudes, so most likely, you know, your mid-latitude aurora photographers are really going to have to sit this one out. But the nice thing is that at about the end of this week, we're going to get a much better view of that coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone soon. And most likely, we're going to get a better chance for mid-latitudes around then. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we are at solar minimum and we have a spotless sun yet again, folks. This means that everything is in the green when it comes to big flares. We have no risk for radio blackouts right now, which makes GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. The nice thing is that we also have solar flux that's still hanging on to the low 70s, so radio propagation is at the low end of marginal, and these conditions will continue easily through the end of the week when they might actually even boost as new regions rotate into Earth view from the sun's backside. Now also because we are at solar minimum, the cosmic ray penetration is a bit higher than it normally would be. So all you frequent flyers, and this includes air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are at the moderate range for radiation dose. And this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week has been, well, kind of reasonably quiet. We've been getting some pockets of fast solar wind that haven't been all that fast, but they have kept things pretty unsettled and been shooting us some kind of disturbed solar wind, which I know has been driving you aurora photographers absolutely crazy, even at high latitudes. It's really been tough getting those shots. Now the good thing, though, is that these unsettled conditions help to stabilize the upper atmosphere. So you GPS uh, users, you've been getting some decent reception even at low latitudes 
and even on the Earth's night side. And amateur radio operators, this also boosts the radio propagation for you just a little bit. Now these conditions are going to continue easily for the next three to five days before things begin to settle down. And then we get to talk about the coronal hole that's just beginning to rotate into Earth view. That region could easily give us a solar storm or at least active conditions in about 10 to 14 days. And then on top of that, we have some bright regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view in a few days, and that could boost the solar flux. So hey, it looks like there's some good news for pretty much everyone. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.